Thanks for joining us here once again for the Run For Their Life series. We hope you're enjoying this journey so far. Stay tuned to see more glorious views from the Sri Lankan countryside, but we are slowly making our way further away from the quiet roads to the much more crazy busy ones as we make our way towards the halfway point near the Nagumbo area where we also welcome the return of a team member. Make sure you don't miss the two incredible dog stories in this video and also a few words from the founder of Animal SOS. So sit back, relax and hope you enjoy this almost one hour long episode. It's so hot! Sweating buckets. an early start today it's just gone seven o'clock and we have the support van back which is great we only have an hour to drive to our starting point today but if we were driving there in the tuk-tuks it would take us a long time a lot more than that like double the time so this is good we can get loads of kilometers in today because yesterday we didn't because it fell so yeah, today's going to be a good day. I can feel it. My body's feeling okay despite all the injuries. The guys, the support team, they are heading off to Yapahua Rock Fortress this morning. Doing a bit of sightseeing. I think it's much needed for them because they've been so busy looking after me and making sure I'm getting from A to B that they're not doing any travelling or sightseeing. So this morning it's going to be really nice for them to travel around and see some beautiful places and we're gonna head off to the starting point which is still in ah, still in elephant territory <laughs> so kind of glad we have the support van for that so that we're not just in the tuk-tuks um, so yeah it's gonna be a good day bye thank you Okay, only two kilometers done so far this morning and one of those was a one kilometer walking warm up. This is how much I'm sweating already. Disgusting. <laughs> it's so hot. Oh my goodness. It's another little puppy. <laughs> Happy little puppy. Got very bad skin, very smelly. rest point this is the most beautiful area I think we've run through so far it's so gorgeous there's so much greenery and waters everywhere it's amazing the guys are resting over here I've just done some work on the laptop had a coffee my tummy is not feeling the best today honestly but anyway try not to think about that got other worse things to think about and yeah, I think we're going to head off in a minute, keep pushing on another 5k and rest. It's very, very, very hot today, so I'm glad we started a little bit earlier. Whilst I'm running through this breathtaking area and resting with this great bunch of dogs, the support team are off on their own adventure today to visit Yapahua Rock Fortress, which is one of Lahiri and I's favourite places to visit in Sri Lanka.
somewhere between 10 and 15 kilometers really beautiful area so glad we've chosen to run at this part of Sri Lanka just trying to go south all the time as much as possible so we're just following the walking routes but it's so hot so I'm just trying to run from shade to shade <laughs> and each shaded part try to stop for a bit just to try to regulate my temperature because the last thing I want is to get heat stroke but I'm gonna have a snack this is a raspberry cheesecake today so we've got loads of snack bars can't open them though hmm. and I got sun cream in my eyes because the sweat drips down my face lovely isn't it? kept, kept out Down, down, down. Down. Huh? Broken. Take book. Mm. Wow. Running is worth it for all these snacks. In the meantime, the crew are busy getting lost down the roads less travelled and putting their tuk tuk driving skills to the test down some pretty bumpy roads. We are testing now the route that Lucy is going to run and yeah, now Nico is trying to find out if the puddle is too deep and for me to go with the tuk tuk. I had to get the umbrella out because the heat is just so unbearable. Ooh. Oh my goodness, oh, something's dead. It smells so bad. Ooh. And I've got the support vehicle just behind me with the aircon at the ready, following with his hazard lights on at a snail pace because I'm not exactly running very fast. It's just too hot. Oh. I think no matter what time of the day you start running, you're gonna be running in the heat here. It's just unavoidable. Well, that was it for our dreamy, quiet, perfect roads. We're now back onto a busy main road with some pretty fast moving vehicles. Honestly, I can't wait for this last leg of the run for this half of the day to be over and to be reunited with the team. Okay, well, we've just had a lovely couple of hours rest at our accommodation. It is glorious here and I'm so excited. I wish we could stay longer, but we never have very long whilst we're on the road. But this is just such an incredible place. And I can't wait to ah! bash out a few kilometers and come back here and enjoy it and relax. Lahiri's just bandaged my broken toe. Not that it's broken, but my toe now is pretty bad. And uh, yeah, we also just had a lovely time chilling at the pool and yeah, just a wonderful place. So yeah, let's get out there again, get a few more kilometers in and then come back, relax and have some dinner. Are you ready? Yeah. Here we are. This is where we finished earlier. Where we start again now. <laughs> All right, and so it has begun the second half of the day. Well, not even half because it's now five o'clock in the evening and it seems to be the busiest time of the day for this road. It's so busy. Everyone is driving so, so fast. I just feel like this is very dangerous and we have made the sensible decision to walk this part of the journey. It is my least favorite part so far since coming from Jaffna 
just because it's a main road and we literally cannot avoid it there are no other like village or rural roads that are so direct otherwise we would be adding many 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 more kilometers onto the run so we're going to keep going along this busy road and hope that we stay safe oh look at all the goats can you see them they're coming at least we have goats oh <laughs> Another beautiful morning, day nine. We are up nice and early this morning. It's just before six o'clock. We're waiting for Mali, our van driver, to come and pick us up. Everyone else is in bed. And we're just gonna get a nice early start today because yesterday it was just unbearably hot. We're gonna try and get loads of kilometers in before it gets unbearable with the heat. But yeah, what a beautiful place to wake up in. I wish we could have stayed in bed a lot longer, to be honest, because the beds are so comfortable. But it's so nice to get up at this time and all you can hear are the birds and the lake over here is just absolutely stunning. There's so many, there's like hundreds of pink lotus flowers there. Such a peaceful, tranquil place. I'm excited to do a few kilometers and then come back here later. <laughs> and like relax in the pool. Actually, I want to show you guys around as well because it's a really nice place. Good morning, Maggie Adley. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. You good? Yeah. Did you sleep good? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, good morning from a very beautiful location. Um, I'm here to update you a little bit about how it's been the past few days and what we've been getting up to um, but more importantly to share a little bit of reality on this project. Last night was the first night where we felt a little bit of tension in the group. Um, we've all been getting on so well and we really have a lot of love and respect for each other. And I think the past few days after seeing Lucy have several injuries and push herself, keep pushing, um, there's been a lot of realizations. For me, I think the realization is that initially I thought that a challenge like this, as big and like huge as it is, was all about mental strength and it's all in the mind, as long as you keep telling yourself you're gonna keep running, then you'll get to the end. But I think seeing Lucy fall the other day and seeing her in pain, her knees in pain, and Carrie and Nico on the support team know a lot about sports injuries and things like that, so having conversations with them, I've realized that as, as strong as your mind is, you can keep wanting to go and go and go, but if your body won't let you or your body becomes weak or tired or you have really severe injuries, as strong as your mind is, like you're not gonna be able to keep going. Um, so yeah, I think there's a lot of reality checks the past few days and 
us on the support team wanting to see the bigger picture, the long-term impact of doing all this running and Lucy's health and everything, but also trying to find that balance between thinking about long-term impact and health, but also finishing the run, which is what we're here to do. And if we don't finish the run, then we, we haven't succeeded in the challenge that we've put before us, that Lucy's put before herself. So yeah, we want to get to that finish line, but we don't want Lucy to have so many injuries that she can't um, or that crop up in the future. So yeah, we've been really trying hard to strike that balance and maybe we don't all agree at all times and that's normal, we're all human. But yeah, just reminding Lucy also that she's human and as incredible and powerful as her mind is, if the body is weak or if the body is tired or injured, then you also need to take it a little bit easy, be kind to yourself. Um, yeah, so as amazing as this whole experience is, it's also very, very tough. And we're finding that out along the way for sure. Good morning everyone from day nine. <laughs> Today we are hoping to get somewhere just north of Giriula. I think that's how you say it. We are slowly making our way down to the south. We are this morning, we're 10 kilometers in. We started super early this morning so we could beat the heat of the day because yesterday it was just too intense. So yeah, cracking on. Bashing out the kilometres this morning. Where's Ruru? There he is. <laughs> Beautiful day, but we are running on the main roads, which isn't so pleasant, but at least it's quick, straightforward, direct. Let's go! Then, there's no right road there. Mummy's big. this Oops. So we started our run this morning on the main road, which wasn't so pleasant, but there was lots of shade and it was super easy running. So we bashed out the first five kilometers really easy. And then we were just carrying on and I found this other little pathway thinking that could be a really good cut through and cut off like at least one kilometer. And Google Maps said that it was a good little footpath, but it was a dead end. It was just rice paddies and full of mud. So anyway, at least I've done a few extra kilometers, but we're now cycling back. Ooh to the main road no point in running all the way back in reverse so yeah and then we'll start again from there okay we just finished off our 20 kilometer run this morning it's taken us i think three hours <laughs> And we're now going to head back to the hotel for a much needed rest and breakfast, which we're really excited about, and hopefully some more coffee. And I just need so much water. My mouth is very dry, even though I've drunk so much already this morning. But just sweating buckets. ocean on the west side of Sri Lanka and this little bit is Colombo okay we're up here this is me Ooh. oh dear we've got That's an obstruction yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Match the so <laughs> then we literally just drive west yeah doesn't cut off any kilometers but then we just go south from there yes it feels so good to get back to our cozy hotel after that 20 kilometer run and we had the most wonderful breakfast slash lunch very very full now it was much needed to restore all of those calories again and i thought this would also be a really good time to show you guys the place because this is a really amazing accommodation it's so so nice and we've just had such a wonderful night just chilling here eating wonderful food and using the pool the pool is really really wonderful perfect place to refresh in the heat of the day 
and also behind me here this is like the communal area so there's lots of sofas lots of places to lounge and relax and chill and yeah also just to witness the scenery and observe all the wildlife there's so much wildlife in this area loads of birds this morning there were so many birds singing and the lake is literally right here it's just glorious location so yeah definitely recommend staying here if you're in this area of Sri Lanka and this is where we stayed last night absolutely massive villa we have two large double beds and a beautiful outside bathroom which is just wonderful to use a hot or cold shower at the end of the day and also our room it's just located in this most tranquil area we're just surrounded by so much greenery here so many birds singing and this is our balcony veranda thing and it literally overlooks the beautiful lake just what an incredible place so happy to have stayed here last night but wish we could stay longer but we need to keep moving south and now we're going to relax one more time in this lush pool before we head out to run some more kilometers Okay, it's 2.30 and we're back on the road. We've got some cloud coverage and we've had a nice refreshing break. Lots of food, lots of pool time. And yeah, now we're heading back out to our start, stop, start, stopping, starting point. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just keep heading south, keep doing the same thing over and over again. <laughs> Okay, so we're back on it. The support team have gone a bit further south. So we're gonna try and just get in as many kilometers as possible in the light and then stop running when it gets dark. But we're on this busy main road. It's really not pleasant to be running on here. And I really need a wee. Taking a much needed break. It's really Getting a new subscriber. Oh man. <laughs> New. Okay, last rest stop is done. We've got seven kilometers left of the day. We just gained a new subscriber. Whoop. If you're not subscribed, you should subscribe. Press that red button and the bell notification. Really helps our channel out. Anyway, stop talking, Lucy. Get going. Also, really not enjoying this road. <laughs> Okay, I think we can see the end, but we're now walking the last kilometre. Is that even the end? Because it's just too dangerous on this road, literally there's everything here. Container lorries, really fast buses, tractors, tuk-tuks, motorbikes, cyclists, pedestrians, cows, everything is here and it's crazy and everyone is like double overtaking each other and it's just far too dangerous me to run and if I fall over then it's done so <laughs> we're just making another sensible decision just do a one kilometer cool down and then we can go and lie down and eat some food <laughs> shop. Hi, me again. Another tough few days, um, full of highs, full of lows, 
and everything in between. It's always very hard to tell what <laughs> what happened because so many things are happening and I'm kind of uh, losing track of the time. So I'm just gonna start with the highlights. High over the past few days has been all of the positive interactions that we've had with dogs on the street. Yeah, so we went to the Rock Fortress and you have this amazing view over the landscape which was really nice. Um, also I felt like the dogs are looking better, a bit better in the south. The first few days of being in Jaffna we witnessed so much suffering and when we lost Blue, when we took an older dog in and tried to find a solution for him and then we met another dog who'd been hit on the highway and we had to organise treatment for her. It's all very taxing and it's all very heartbreaking and you feel like your help is just a tiny drop in the ocean. Um, but since then and over the past few days we've had some really really positive wonderful interactions with so many dogs. We saw a very nice dog family. It was really cute also to have time to watch them because that was on our like day off. We've gone around with our food, we've emptied the entire bag of I think 15-20 kilos, um, made a lot of friends along the way, little fluffy friends of course. We've administered spot on treatment to dogs who were covered in ticks so at least to give them a bit of relief for even a short amount of time. Um, done a couple of wound cleans. Then what was not so good is Rebecca left us which was really sad, we were all really sad and it was very suddenly and... My lowest low over the past few days was losing Rebecca, one of our support team members. She was in the green tuk tuk with me and even though we'd only known each other for seven days or so, um, we got on so well and we really really laughed we barely laughed together and yeah it was all very sudden and we were so sad to see her go even though we knew it's what was best but yeah i just felt like i'd lost my left arm and then i've been driving the tuk tuk alone without her and it's just a huge huge bubbly kind caring presence that we had on the support team that yeah we really miss her and I miss her a lot and I know we're going to catch up when we go back down south and hopefully she'll be with us for the last few days of the campaign. I hope that we'll meet her in the south again because this is where she lives and um, yeah, like to make new friends through this um, whole campaign. It's also, yeah, that's very nice. Yeah, it was also not great. Lucy had another injury. I feel like the injuries are get are getting worse and it's very difficult for us as a team also to balance. So we are more like, okay, take a break. Lucy, of course, she wants to um, do the challenge because she's told herself for half a year that she's going to do this. But sometimes I feel like the, there are like physical limitations and I feel it's not only about the mind but yeah, that's my opinion and that you should also listen to your body and it's very difficult to navigate between like we have to take care of her but we also want to support her and it's yeah it's sometimes a bit difficult and then like we planning the route and don't not forgetting our like, purpose while we're here um yeah so this is sometimes a bit difficult and I feel like we still have to like, we're not there yet, um, so we still have to figure out what's the, what's the best way. But I think that's also normal. And we said it before that we will probably have to adjust a few things along the run because there are just things happening that, yeah, we didn't plan. But that's normal, I guess. Um, yeah, that's it. Tomorrow is a very exciting day for me and I think also for the team. Um, we've got a little surprise in the morning and can't wait i feel like a kid on christmas day and yeah i'm gonna try and go to sleep now so we can get up early in the morning all right it's early morning again the team is splitting up 
We're already here, all loaded. These guys are organising their tuk tuk. Hello! <laughs> Roo Roo? How are you doing? Are you ready for another wonderful day of running? Yeah. You're running, bicycling. You're bicycling. <laughs> You're bicycling the length of Sri Lanka. I'm running the length of Sri Lanka. Perfect. All right, day 10. Uh, just to be honest, I'm not feeling good in the mind and physically. Uh, my mind is struggling because now we're not going through nice locations, it's all main roads. So I don't feel very motivated or wanting to do it like I was in the van, like I just don't want to get out and start running again the whole day. So there's that and then my knee is hurting again and my toe is still really hurting. So just dealing with the pain as well. So I really don't want to be doing this today, but I just have to remember why I'm doing it. I'm doing it to raise awareness and funds for the dogs at Animal SOS. And they are a huge part of Lahir and I's life. And this is why we've chosen to do such a challenge. So yeah, just got to keep pushing on for them. So who is them? And why am I running the length of Sri Lanka? Whenever you're ready. And action. <laughs> so this is seven. Uh, Seven arrived in September 2022. Seven is a survivor of Hakapatas. Hakapatas is a technique used in Sri Lanka to kill wild animals. So it's like a handmade device, like a small bomb that is hidden in the food and then it just explodes in the mouth. So usually the animals die from their wounds or from starvation. It's a very painful injury. So this is an illegal practice in Sri Lanka, but unfortunately it still happens these days. So Seven was a victim, victim of it. So when Seven arrived, she still had her job, but the injury was so bad that she had to go through emergency surgery. So her whole bottom jaw had to be removed and then she had intensive care in the clinic she had a feeding tube to help her eating so seven is not our only survivor of hakapatas we have more cases like her however the extent of her injury and missing jaw doesn't allow her to eat on her own so we have two dedicated staff members in charge of giving her her daily food. However, she can still drink on her own. So this is even very funny because she submerged her head in the water and you can tell once she's been drinking. She is a very happy dog now. So it's the proof that uh, any dog can have a great recovery because despite her injury and what she's been through today, she's such a happy dog. She's full of life. She's running in the garden. She loves to play with all the dogs. She's a warrior, she's a survivor, and she's an example of hope. And she's one of the reasons why we continue to save dogs and give them a chance, despite what they've been through. My name's Kim Cooley and I'm the founder of Animal SOS Sri Lanka. The journey started in the 80s, 1980s, when I came to Sri Lanka as a tourist. And I travelled around and I saw so much animal suffering, particularly with the street animals, and I felt very upset and it ruined my holiday. And I wasn't going to come back because I think when you go on holiday and you see so much suffering, it, it just ruins your, your time really, you know, you can't relax, you're constantly thinking about all the animals suffering, the animals dragging themselves around. But I did come back, I came back a few years later and I started to take some dogs that we found dying in the streets to the vets and myself and a friend, we used to spend all our salaries basically on just trying to, to help as many as we could. But the situation was that when we left the country, we had nowhere to home these dogs, so we left them at the vets and most of them died. And it, it just seemed quite hopeless really. 
Um, and also during that time, many years ago, they did use to cull the, the, the street animals. So there was a no kill initiative in 2006. And then I thought, I wonder if I could do a project there. Now, now there's hope for the animals and they're not going to collect them and kill them. Is a hope to do a project there. So that really was, was the vision and that's how we started. We started from scratch with no funds whatsoever. And it's really built from there, it's really grown from there. And it, it's a massive project now. We have outgrown ourselves now in all these years because we actually started in 2008. But the aim was always basically to, to look after the, the disabled animals because we've so many dogs and cats on the roads, many of them get run over and many of them are killed but also many are disabled and it's the disabled dogs that have no chance here, they have no hope really. Very much pro-life organisation, very much believe that disabled dogs like Foxy here, who's been here many years, um, deserve to have a chance. Just because they're disabled doesn't mean to say they can't play, they can't run around in their carts. Um, they can't be loved and they do have the best quality of life that we can give them. With 2,500 animals now, uh, we're at a bit of a crisis point because we really do need to expand this project and the, the pressure is now that we're getting these very, very critical animals. We have no space left, so every day I'm getting these heartbreaking messages, videos of dogs dying in the streets, disabled animals which I know that we have no space to accommodate now. It's really, really hard and we have dogs at our gates almost every day, holes in their heads, maggot wounds, disabled animals. If you turn them away, you know they're going to die. So it's, it's, it's really, really stressful, the situation we're in now. Um, so we need to take the project to the next level and that is to expand. Please consider if you love animals and, and particularly cats and dogs, street animals that have very little hope here without us. Please do consider helping this wonderful appeal from Lucy. This is Teddy. Uh, Teddy came in January this year. He was found stuck in a drain pipe after an accident. But unfortunately someone, other than doing the right thing, getting her out, getting her care, they poured boiling water over her. So she has a big scar here and that's from boiling water and that's how she was found with massive open wound. She also had Babesia gibsoni, which is a blood-borne parasite from ticks and it can be um, a killer if not treated soon. But she's fought through everything she had distended before she even came here and that's why she's very much but she's amazing, full of love and full of fight. Very sweaty, made it to five kilometers, and uh, now we're turning right and we're heading towards like going parallel to Nagumbo. Very, very busy, but we're meeting some nice cyclists on this road and they're keeping me going. <laughs> so, we've just found a road that's more of a rural road that we don't have to go on the main roads, so I'm very happy now. It's definitely picked me up a little bit much quieter and safer, lots of shade. Oh, and also I wanted to just tell you guys that yesterday we reached a huge milestone. We got to £10,000 on our fundraiser for Animal SOS, which is absolutely amazing. It's 20%. Our target is 50000 So reaching 10000 was a huge deal so very happy about that thank you to everyone who has donated it means the absolute world and just keeps pushing me to keep running 
so thank you if you haven't donated and you want to please do give us a push yeah that would be amazing We went the wrong way again, so now I'm on the bicycle, <laughs> going back to where I should have been going. But look at this view, wow, so many coconut trees. It's day 10, I can't believe we're on day 10 and I'm still running, this is absolutely crazy. But we are very, very close, we're almost parallel with Nagumbo as we speak. So tomorrow, it's the 20th of October and we're doing our Colombo meetup. We're gonna be there just having a wonderful rest, a much needed rest. And yeah, it'd be really great to connect with some of you guys and just chill and chat. Yeah, so hopefully we'll see you in Colombo tomorrow. <laughs> see you tomorrow. As I ran what would be the last quiet, scenic route of the trip, the crew parted ways with one of the much-loved tuk-tuks. Hello, good morning! Um, we're just heading off to the airport to drop off one of our tuk-tuks. We're saying goodbye to, what's his name? Helmut. 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 Bye, Helmut. <laughs> um, today, which we're very sad about, I've been driving in the green tuk-tuk called Cabbage. And I've been driving in the red one. <laughs> They've been driving in the red one and since Rebecca left I've been driving alone. So we're all going to hop into one Tuk Tuk from today. Um, and we're also going to pick up a new support team member. Woo! <laughs> we're all excited for a new burst of energy. Um, and yeah, stay tuned to see who that is. Woo stay tuned. So many Tuk Tuks. Oh, there he is. Oh, he's so beautiful. These are all the tuk-tuks you can rent from Tuk Tuk Rental here in Colombo. And there's more. Bye. Bye. Bye, we love you. Thank you for your service. And then we ran all the way. We went to the bridge. Yeah, there's the bridge. There's the bridge. All the way, all down that highway. We went through Mana. Then we went down here. We did a little safari and there. Where did we go next? No, down the middle here, oh, I think. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, true. Down yeah. The middle, then we ended up here. And now we went down. I think somewhere here. And there we are. And where are we going? Oh, now we are here. But where are we going? Oh. See you soon. So we're all in one tuk tuk now, the little green cabbage. How's it? Good. 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 Fine. Not quite as good as your tuk tuk. <laughs> um, and we're all at the airport, ready to pick up our new team member. Are we excited or not? Yeah. Yes, very <laughs> excited. New energy is coming now to Sri Lanka. Yeah, we're ready for some new energy. We've all been a little bit tired over the past few days. Yeah. Think about driving a tuk tuk and picking our new member up at the airport in a tuk-tuk is that we're not hounded by people asking if we want tuk-tuk because we have one so yeah it's quite nice it's a nice change who's this we've got here it's our new visitor all the way from india here he comes our new team member <laughs> hi nice to see you yeah. <laughs> hello He's back! <laughs> Welcome back! <laughs> so how far it is from here? And now a quick word from the wonderful Kirsty and Karthik and their furry family in Delhi, India. Hi, I'm Kirsty. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kirsty. Hi, I'm Karthik. We are husband and wife living in Delhi, India with our 15 rescue dogs and a rescue cat. So we first met back in 2019 when I was solo traveling in India. I found a dog who was in a really bad condition at the Lotus Temple in Delhi. 
I googled vet clinics nearby, tried to find some help for her, and that's how I found this guy. Karthik had quit his job in the Navy in 2016 to set up a vet clinic in Delhi to help animals, mostly street animals. Um, so the profits from the clinic went back into helping animals on the street who didn't have anyone else to look out for them. Five years later, we're married. Yeah, with 16 kids. With 16 kids. Yeah. <laughs> Third Alice, kids. Third kids, yes. The very day we met, me and Kirsty, I told Kirsty that we should dream up and we should start an initiative in helping animals in India. And uh, the native breeds here, we call them indie dogs or they are the desi dogs, the local dogs that you find on the street. And from there, uh, we started Lotus Indie Foundation. So Lotus Indie Foundation is just our individual efforts to help the dogs here in Delhi. Mm -hmm. At first, we wanted to focus mainly on vaccination and sterilization to yeah. try and get to the root of the issue here, which is the fact that there are over 69 million homeless dogs here in India. Um, but then as the years went by, we lost the clinic in yes. 2022 Little. due to financial losses. And our focus mainly became on abandoned and neglected cases. Here in Delhi, there's a lot of attention focused on foreign breed dogs. So we've got Huskies, Malamutes, German Shepherds, and Labradors, Labradors Retrievers. Yeah. They're all bred like fashion accessories. People buy them from breeders, and then as soon as they have a medical issue, they dump them again. So we found ourselves completely overwhelmed by the sheer amount of abandonment cases which is why we have 15 dogs and a cat yeah, yeah. <laughs> of dogs who don't belong here in India who cannot adapt to the climate and they can't go to some random families because people don't agree with sterilization the breed dogs because they want pups out of them so we had to keep them with us so our focus is on the ones with us right now we're making sure that we do them justice and also encouraging others to adopt dogs not sharp yeah and to consider adopting native indian dogs or indies who are adapted to this climate yeah. and who thrive in india so how did we meet lucy and lahiru how did we find out about them so my friend from back home in the uk one day i met her for lunch and she said, oh, you should follow this girl, Lucy, on Instagram. She really reminds me of you. She moved to Sri Lanka, she got married there, and now she rescues dogs. Um, so I went on Lucy's Instagram page, and the very next day she posted a story saying that she was starting this exciting new project yeah. in October. It was April, back in April, and she was looking for people to join her. So. I sent her a message, the next couple of days we had a video call and here we are on the campaign, on the Run For Their Life campaign, meeting such an amazing couple like Lucy and Lahiru. And the initiative that they are doing for helping the suffering dogs in Sri Lanka, that is huge. And the awareness they wanted to spread, so that just clicked us that okay, we should also join the team. This project really resonated with us because we love supporting good people doing good things. Yeah. And not only is it for the animals, but also the fact that Lucy wanted to do this campaign to raise awareness of mental health. Uh, working in this field of work in animal rescue, we both have suffered from burnout. Yes. And compassion fatigue you're constantly seeing the suffering of these animals and it can bring you down really hard. Yeah, true. So being part of this was a good way to connect with people on the same path, with the same mission and yeah, to bring each other together because we're so much stronger together and whether that's working with other individuals or organisations, yeah. we believe that we can have so much more of an impact if we all just work together and help each other out.
we could probably talk all day about rescue work and what we do and what we want to achieve with our work yeah. but we better get back to this video we've got a lot of hungry dogs to feed on the road lucy's got a lot of running to do um but for now one last thing i will tell everybody please consider adopting a dog get a new family member from nearby sh any shelter that you have nearby your house or from animal sos anywhere in the world and you if you're watching the video from anywhere in the world you can adopt from any nearby shelter if you can't adopt maybe you can foster correct or you can just donate to the incredible organizations doing such amazing work to make it better for these animals as mahatma gandhi said the greatness of any nation and its moral progress can be judged how the animals are treated there so it's very very important you treat the animals right and please adopt don't shop thank you so we're back on the busy main road one of them we just spent about 20 to 30 minutes having a rest point at 12 kilometers and trying to figure out the best route but we're going to keep trying to bash out these kilometers with my sexy new umbrella that my husband got for me not as colorful and happy as the other one but it was very broken at that point and um, whilst we're doing this, the support team has gone to the airport because they're picking up Karthik, who is Percy's husband. He has just flown back to Sri Lanka from India for the final days of the campaign and his energy is much needed. So he's bringing a load of that in his suitcase, plus chocolate vegan soya milk, which is keeping me going today. I'm so ready for that vegan chocolate milk today. It's going to be a nice reward for the end of the day. So let's keep going. He is! He's arrived! Woohoo! Woohoo! Yay! Reunited! Yes. Ready for leg two of the journey. Yeah, he's gonna run, he thinks, but I'm not sure about that. Just only thinking. Only thinking, no yeah. running. Yeah. Okay, good. Glad to have you back. Yeah. <laughs> for once in our lives, I'm driving him. Oh, thanks. Do you trust me to drive? Yeah. Yeah. How are you feeling? Very hot. There's no shade out there, is there? No, no tree, no shade, no rain, it will be hot. It is just unbearable heat. Even I've just been sat down for a couple minutes and I still have all the sweat dripping off my face. <laughs> oh my God, losing so much water is unbelievable. But I still am not satisfied with the kilometers so far this morning. So we have no choice, we have to keep pushing on. And, uh, yeah, I feel like we need to do another five kilometers. Five more kilometers. Yeah, it's fine. And then we can call it quits. I think it's too hot right now. The run is over for today. I'm so happy. It was so hot and we just kept pushing on. We literally didn't film anything for the last like seven kilometers or something just because it's too hot, too busy. And we just wanted to push on and get the kilometers done without having to like think about filming. Anyway, fresh lemon juice. I'm gonna enjoy this and then we're gonna head to our accommodation for the night. I'm so excited and I'm so excited to reunite with the support team. Karthik has arrived in Sri Lanka, so it would be nice to go and see everyone and just relax for the rest of the afternoon. Cheers. And relax we did. A much needed rest before another busy day tomorrow, which we're trying to be organized and plan here. Well, most of us anyway. Well, this is quite a lovely place to unwind after all of the running so far. And just want to again thank all of the accommodations that have supported the campaign and provided us with a much needed rest spot. So along with Magali Verva by Tequila Holidays, we also want to give a shout out to Villa Hashini here in Colombo for allowing us to stay here and for supporting the campaign. It's businesses like this that allow us to complete the campaign and just keep going and to be able to give as many profits to the animals as possible. That's what it's all about. And we just want people to know about these businesses who are supporting such campaigns because those are the kind of businesses that we would support as well. So yeah, just wanna give a shout out. This place is absolutely amazing. Very comfortable beds, 
very nice pool, really nice food, and yeah, a great place to crash, especially if you're exploring Colombo or running through. Thank you.